Hello Lakeview Spartans. We are starting our second flipped activity classroom lesson and I thought why not start again with some warm weather, 90, probably 80 degrees, sunny, Gogwak Lake around the back of my boat. This is my family, my husband Mr. Carroll, my stepdaughter Brittany, and my grandson Landon. So again I'm trying to think spring and get us fired up for the warm weather hopefully is ahead of us. Okay, you should have your solving one-step algebraic equation packet in front of you. I'm going to model some solving equations with you, and then you can go ahead and practice on your own to see how you do. Um, if you notice, I have some helpful hints there provided. And again, if we're talking about solving one-step equations, that means that there is one math operation. So if you're, whether you're dealing with addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, to help you solve for x, we need to get in the mindset of doing what's called the inverse operation or doing what's the opposite of addition, which would be subtraction, to help solve the equation. So I want to kind of take us back to the pouches and gold coins. And so right here I'm going to, I'm going to draw a pouch because that's going to rep represent the equation below for x plus 2 equals 7. So there's my pouch and I'm going to represent two gold coins. So that's on the left side of the equation. And then on the right side, I have seven gold coins. And the big thing that I want us to remember from our previous lesson is that we always need to maintain equality. So what we do is we ask ourselves then, we only have one pouch on the left side of the equality, so we can proceed on to the gold coins, and we ask ourselves, how many gold coins does each side of the equation share? And hopefully you just answered that question yourself, and hopefully you said two. So we can remove two gold coins from both sides, and that will help maintain the equality. And then I am left with one pouch equals five gold coins. So that's just tying into the lesson we did previous to this to get us thinking about how to solve equations. Let me erase that. Okay, so now we're going to actually move into solving the equation. X plus two equals seven. So the first thing you need to do is locate the variable in your equation, and there's the X right there. Okay, I'll underline it for you. And I think about, okay, if I relate it to the gold coins and I want to solve for 1x to find out the mystery value for 1x, then I think about this idea of undoing addition. So you ask yourself, what's the opposite of adding to? And hopefully you said subtract to. So what I'm going to do to maintain equality is show that I'm going to subtract to from both sides of the equation. And that leaves me with 1x, and then 2 subtract 2 cancels out, and I'm left with 0, and then 7 subtract 2 equals 5. So then I found the mystery number x to be a solution of 5. Now to check your solution, you enter the value for x back into the original equation. So then I would do 5 plus 2 to see if that checks out, and it does because 5 plus 2 is 7, so I maintained equality. So then what I would like you to do is to pause this video and then go ahead and you need to practice equation number 1b using my model as a resource or an example to help you. Now we're going to move on to the next equation. I need to erase that, keep doing unnecessary marks there. And now our next equation is y minus 3 equals negative 8. So then I ask, again, I ask myself, where's the variable? There's y, so I underline it so I can find it right away. And I think about, well, who's hanging out with y? Right now we have a minus 3. So again, to undo the subtraction in order to solve for y algebraically, I think, what's the opposite of subtracting 3? And the opposite of subtracting 3 is adding 3. And remember, what I do to one side, I must do to the other. So 3 subtract 3 does give me 0, so I can just draw a line, cancels out. That's how we refer to that with solving equ equations. And then I'm left with negative 8 plus 3. Now this takes us back to accentuate the negative when we learned about positive and negative numbers. 
and you'll notice that I owe more money than I have in my pocket. I owe eight, and I have three dollars in my pocket, so I don't have enough to pay that person back. So negative eight plus three is negative five. And then that's my solution for y. Now, it's important not only that we get the correct solution for the variable, but that we also show our algebraic steps. And that's what I'm doing here with the canceling out and adding three to both sides. And while doing that, I'm still maintaining equality. So now to check my solution, I put my solution back into the original equation. So I have negative five subtract three. And I want to see, does that truly equal negative eight? So if you want, you can do swipe, swipe. I add the opposite. I owe $5 and I owe $3, so all together I owe negative 8. And I find out that the left side does balance and equal the right side, so I found the correct solution for equation 2a. Now, go ahead and pause the video, and then I want you to practice equation 2b on your own. You can use mine, as a, a, again, as a reference or a resource to help you as you work through question 2b. We're going to go ahead and move on to question 3a. I have 7x equals negative 63. And again, I locate the x. Now I think, okay, right now I have a, a number, 7, what I, and I refer to as hugging the variable x. Because I don't see any other math operation signs, that indicates multiplication. So it's really 7 times x equals negative 63. So I think, okay, the inverse operation or the opposite of multiplying by 7 would be dividing by 7. So I can use my fraction bar as a division symbol. And to maintain equality so that that scale maintains its balance, I divide both sides by 7. And 7 divided by itself will give me 1x. And then negative 63 divided by 7 will give me negative 9. So I just solved for x. Now, again, I always want to be sure my solution is correct, so I'm going to check my solution. So I'm going to go 7 times negative 9 to see if that truly does equal negative 63. And just like from our unit, accentuate the negative, when we multiply a positive times a negative, they have different signs, so the answer will always be negative 63. And so it checks out. So I found the right solution for... 3a. Now you're going to go ahead and do 3b on your own. Again, you can pause the video so that you can practice your skills with solving equations. And I'm going to go ahead and switch to our last equation. Now, unfortunately, the way this document turned out, this 2 should not be, negative 2 shouldn't be there. So I'm just going to cross that off. It's not like that on your sheet, but for some reason it's showing up like this on my slide. So I'm crossing those off, and it should be, oh, okay, let me double check here. So this was, i got to erase it again, because I remember negative 2 then goes underneath. So I'm going to put negative 2 here, and then I need to erase this again. That was negative 3. Just so you can see them on my screen as they appear in your packet. I'm going to cross that off. Okay, so now this is a divided by negative 2 equals 24. So that mark underneath the a is actually a fraction bar, which means division or a division bar. So now I ask myself, what's the opposite of dividing by negative 2? Hopefully you just said multiplying by negative 2. So I want to, I'm going to extend that fraction bar a little bit, and I'm going to multiply upstairs by negative 2. And again, to maintain equality, what I do to one side, I must do to the other. So I multiply the right side by negative 2. And this is going to be important that when you multiply by negative 2 that you write it upstairs in the numerator of the fraction. Because now, negative 2 divided by negative 2 does give me 1a is left. So now that will cancel out. And then I have 24 times negative 2, which would be negative 48. So there's my solution for A. So just as I always solve for the equation, I always check the solution to be sure I'm correct. So I replace A 
or substitute with A, the solution I found, so negative 48 divided by negative 2, and I want to see, does that equal 24? I want to see if I found the correct solution. So now I'm dividing two negatives, a negative by a negative. They have the same sign, so my answer will be positive. So 48 divided, negative 48 divided by negative 2 is a positive 24. So my solution does check out. Boom. And so now what I would like you to do is practice equation, solving equation number 4B on your own. Again, referring back to the one that I just modeled to help you. And that does officially conclude our lesson for today. I appreciate you tuning in to our second flipped activity classroom video lesson. And we look forward to seeing you again. Have a great evening.